I'm Hannah Cockcroft, MBE. I'm 24 years old and I'm on the British Paralympic athletics team. Uh, I'm a wheelchair racer in the T34 classification and I race the 100, 200, 400 and 800 metres and all, hold all four world records. I am the current world record holder over the 100, 200, 400 and 800 metres for the T34. Um, so yeah, just, just a few. <laughs> There is absolutely no typical day in my life. Every day is different. Um, I guess, you know, it changes throughout the season. So obviously when we're in winter, uh, we spend a month out in Australia just doing a lot of mileage. Um, winter basically is getting the endurance work in. Um, a short session in winter is about a half marathon. So uh, we're just really going out. And then as the summer approaches, I concentrate more on my sprints and trying to get my power and speed back in. But obviously on top of that, you know, I'm, I'm driving from my home in Yorkshire down to Loughborough once a week to, to visit my coach and visit doctors and physios and, and the British Athletics team down there. Um, and then you're meeting with wonderful sponsors such as yourselves and, and, and just trying to fit the competitions in as well. So every day is different and that's what keeps it exciting. Sport definitely feels different now. I think, you know, starting off, but especially going into London 2012, I was 20 years old. I was just a girl from Yorkshire who did this as a hobby. I did it for fun. And London 2012 was a massive experience. But again, just just that. It was just, we're going to take you, just see what you can do. Um, and there was no expectation. No one knew my name. There was no pressure. It was, it was, it was amazing. And then obviously since then, people, London 2012 made Paralympians household names. And I think I was one of those that, that got that honour. Um, and people start paying attention to, you know, what you're winning, what you're maybe not winning, what you're doing well in, what you're maybe not so. Um, and people realise, you know, I haven't lost a major title ever. Um, and that brings with it a lot, a lot of pressure going into Rio, you know, and I try to convince myself that it's not really there, but it is. It's going to be tough. I'm doing two new distances in the 400 and 800 metres. Um, I'm going way out of my comfort zone, but I feel like I can do it. So I think I've definitely changed as a person, if not since London, then definitely in the last year. My competition has stepped up so much. Um, over the last four years. It is tough now and there's a lot of youngsters coming through who are exceptionally talented um, and that does put pressure on me to stay at the top. I know that I can but it, it's just finding the ways and, and finding the team around you that can keep you there. Um, and that, yeah, that has changed my mindset. That's made me train. When I thought I was training really hard going into London, I'm training like a hundred times harder now. I'm training with better people, a better team around me. I'm just a lot more supported and um, yeah, so far so good, it's going well. <laughs> I think my success is down to me. <laughs> I think um, I was always brought up being told that sport wasn't for me, you know, I've got a disability, sport is not something I can join in with. And I was also brought up just being told that not, no is not an answer, you know, you cannot accept that can't is a word and I always wanted to find a way. So sport for me, when I got involved, was a way of proving people wrong. And I think that now that's just the mindset that I hold. You know, I, I started out as a sprinter and now I'm racing in the 800 metres and people were like, nah, you're never going to win this. And, and now it's kind of in my head like, I, I know I can win this, I hold the world record. Um, so for me, I think that's what my success is down to. I guess a little bit of... Um, determination maybe a little bit of bullishness but it works and um, I'm not gonna lie I love winning I love the feeling I've experienced it a lot of times and that's what keeps you going you know if you stop training you're gonna lose this magical feeling and it's just not worth it <laughs> It is, an, well, you know, wheelchair racing is an individual sport and it is just me when I'm out on the track, but there's so many people that go into what everybody sees every season. You know, obviously my coach uh, and my team at British Have Lakes who kind of, you know, without a training plan, I have no idea what to do. SNC coach tell me what to do in the gym, what weights to lift, but it's even down to sponsors who, who you know, top end and invocate, make sure I have the best equipment, I have exactly what I need and, and without that, you definitely won't see me out on the track so there's just so much and you try not to rely too much on other people but as an athlete there is always so much that you need to do that you have to sometimes kind of hand one or two jobs off so you know we're now in the final lead up to Rio I kind of realized you know we're, we're in training camps um, pretty much 
until we leave to Rio now. Leave, I mean, not very much time between competitions and training to, to kind of pack and get ready. So uh, Invercare have helped me out massively, kind of trying to get my chair equipment together, trying to make sure it's safe and it gets to Rio well and, and, and in one piece, which is important. And then, you know, I've got my parents at home trying to do all my packing and the other pieces. So you try to do it and you try to be organised. But, you know, when every performance that people see out on the track, there's been hundreds of people involved in that. So I started with racing when I was 15, so in 2007. Um, I got into it through the Sainsbury School Games, which is like a, a massive multi-sport event that we hold here in the UK. Um, and it's just a junior event, you get to go out, and I actually did the seat of discus when I was there. And off the back of it, got invited to a talent ID day where we take loads of talented athletes and, and let them have a go at all these other sports. And that's where I found wheelchair racing. And, when I first sat in the race chair, it just it was just something completely different. I'd, I'd played basketball, I'd played rugby, I'd obviously done my seat at discus, I'd swam, but wheelchair racing, I could go fast without being shouted at. I didn't have to hold on to anybody, you know, going around up until that age, I always had to hold on to an adult or a parent or a brother or just someone was always there and I had to depend on them to get around and I suddenly had this independence and this freedom that once I was out on the track in the chair, then I could do whatever I wanted and no one could really stop me no one could tell me to slow down or be careful it was it was up to me and I just fell in love with it so after that you know it came at a perfect time I was doing my GCSEs so training became a perfect excuse not to study um, and just started competing at, at events like we're at today just um, domestic events going around and, and I slowly I mean at the time there were not many females involved in wheelchair racing in, in Britain um, so I I kind of started at a lucky time, I guess. Um, but off the back of Britain's return from the Paralympic Games in 2008, uh, we won one athletics gold medal, which is not great. So they kind of had this massive revamp. And as one of the only girls in the sport, I was invited onto the team to try and, you know, build up female participation. Um, and people kind of think that, you know, that was it. I was on the team and, and that I made it. But actually, I sat on the team then for three years and didn't get an international vest, didn't race outside of the country. I just trained really hard and got a better support team around me. And, you know, then I started breaking world records and people really started to pay attention to me. Um, and I think that's when it that's when it changed from being a hobby. That's when it was like, oh, oh, I could do something with this. Um, so in 2011, um, Britain, the British team hadn't quite met their quarter on females that they had to send to the World Championships. Um, and as a female who had sat on the team for a long time doing not a lot, uh, they asked me if I'd like to go. 18, would you like a trip to New, uh, New Zealand for a month without your parents? I said yes, obviously, and became double world champion to everyone's surprise. Um, kind of just went out there again, no pressure, just, just to have fun. Um, and came back with two gold medals and, and that was the moment I think everyone just started to pay attention to me then, you know, I started getting the top of the top support. I started, you know, I got a proper training program. I, I got, you know, I started training every single day. Um, and, and that's when things changed. So it was a quick journey, but not really that quick. <laughs> I think my advice to anyone is just take every opportunity you've got. For so long, I was not handed opportunities. And when I got given the opportunity to try sport, I was so close to saying no. I was scared, I was worried, you know, I don't know anybody, I don't have any friends, I'm gonna be the odd one out. But I kind of got that extra boost from behind me and it was the best thing I ever did. And you know what, you might hate it and that's fine, you know, just go out and try everything. Even if it's not in sport, just try it and find something that you absolutely love because doing something you love for a living is the most incredible thing. You know, you get up every morning and you just wanna to go to work. And I just can't imagine life without sport now, you know, it makes you feel good, it makes you feel happy, you get to travel the world, you get to do something you love and you make the most amazing friends. Um, so yeah, my advice is just go out and try everything and even if you just try it once, you can say you've been there and you've done that and it, it'll be worth it.